I am now going to use the direct modeling functionality within PowerShape to create the electrodes for this mold tool. The first electrode that I wish to create is going to be for these five rib areas. I'm going to select these rib areas using the discrete lasso and then when that is done I'm now going to do a solid core capture of those selected faces. I'm going to align this electrode to the current work plane and then create a 2mm expansion of this selected area. As I will be creating an electrode just to those five ribs, I'm now going to offset these inside faces and do this interactively just by pulling this handle. The outline here gives me the five ribs. I'll accept that. This gives me the five ribs that I require. When I have a look at this with the mole tool, I can see now these five ribs extend past the mole tool impression themselves. So I can now go into my electrode wizard and turn these five individual ribs into a complete electrode. I'm going to create the base for these ribs within the electrode wizard itself. I can change these sizes if I wish and also interact between the CAD model and the wizard. Here I wish to increase the depth of this base to 10 millimeters and now I'm going to apply a holder. I can still interact within PowerShape here from the wizard, extract that electrode away or move it in this graphical window. Going to apply a name and a suitable level for it to be created on and also the setting sheets for this electrode. PowerShape has automatically calculated the appropriate spark gaps for this electrode or I can define them as a user based on my experience. In this instance I'm just going to create them to these spark gaps required just to show how interactive and how we've got control over this. When I come now I can just finish off and this electrode is created for me. This has not just created the electrode, it's also created the setting sheets showing the sizes here of the material block, necessary spark gaps, the material of the electrode and the appropriate holder. I'll also have the general assembly setting sheet which gives me positional information for that electrode and when I go turn to my CAD model I can turn the burn area shading on of the faces of the solid and then do a simulation here just to extract these away. Again, interactivity within PowerShape itself. This completes my first electrode. For the second electrode, I'm going to demonstrate how we can use a predefined wireframe to capture a solid core area to create an electrode. So, with selecting this profile, I can go in, create a solid core capture using a wireframe. We'll see here there are no clearances on this electrode. We can now do this using the functionality associated with direct modeling. So to turn this electrode over, select that first face and now move this face one millimeter. This will give me that extension into the mold tool impression. I'm now going to offset these top faces by two millimeters and then apply a fillet radius around these ribs areas here which you can see have been naturally extended and the reason why I'm going to create these fillet radiuses is that when I come to machining I know then I haven't got to take them out 
to a sharp corner. Turn this to the original orientation and now we'll see on this electrode we've extended into the impression but also provided clearance between the electrode and the mole tool itself. At the moment this is a solid core. I'm now going to turn this into an electrode. The electrode wizard has selected an appropriate blank size for me. I can look at this, it's fine. Now I can choose an appropriate holder. Because I have a 3R blank size, I'm going to select a 3R base holder. The counter has incrementally gone up, and I'm going to choose a new level. I'm going to use pre saved sizes here for this electrode. So it remembered the surface areas we've used previously and selected those appropriate spark gaps. When I finish now, what we'll have created is the electrode, the holder, and all this setting sheet information has been created for my second electrode. So when we come to the GA now, we'll see now that a second electrode has been applied to that general assembly sheet. But we can also turn on the burn area shading Go into our simulation, extract away, we'll see all the faces here of this solid being identified as the appropriate burn and clearance faces. For my next electrode, I'm going to select the areas interactively here, then go into my solid core do a solid core capture of just those selected faces. I want to round these to the nearest millimetre, align it to the work plane and do an oversize of two millimetres. I'm also going to increase the depth here again interactively to 10 millimetres. Having done that I can see I have no clearance across the top and also the electrode extends into the impression which I do not require. I am now going to remove these areas of the electrode I do not require. And we'll see the faces here have been extended and re-intersected for me. Now I'm going to offset these faces two millimeters to give me the clearance I require to the tool and apply a radius around these of one millimeter just to assist me when I come to machining. I can accept that and now when I look at this electrode capture I can see that it extends further into this area than I'd wish. So I'm going to select this face and move it back just another 0.5 millimeters. I have the necessary clearances and extensions now that I require on this electrode. So make the mold tool active select that electrode, solid core extraction. Now when I come to the electrode wizard I'm going to apply now the appropriate material block sizes and holders required. And export this now for PowerMill. So I can create the individual files outside of the Trode file, but in this instance I want the Trode file to contain all the necessary information. So the setting sheets, documentation, holders. I can choose the appropriate area for my electrode to be
exported to. But in this instance, I'm also going to create the inspection points within PowerShape on this electrode. So I can do this within the PowerShape now, create these inspection points that I require on this electrode. Top faces, do it the sides. And if I should create a point of which I'm not happy, I'll merely select it then move it to a new area. When this is done, tick accept. When I click finish, my trode file will now be exported for me. So now all the setting information, documentation, CAD model, inspection points has all been written to a single trode file. I'm now going to extract an electrode from a trode file into this current PowerMill project. I'm going to name the PowerMill project the same as the electrode. And we'll see now that what's happened that the wizard within the PowerMill has extracted from the trode file the material block size automatically. Just by one click generation is now created in PowerMill. What I can do now is analyze interactively within this PowerMill model for minimum radiuses and the draft angle. I can now zoom in for finer control. I can see in these regions here it's around one millimeter. I can now use the measurement toolbar within PowerMill to measure this exactly and see it is exactly one millimeter. Having done that, I can then go and analyze it for the minimum draft angles. I can see here up between 5.5 degrees and half a degree on these faces. I could then select the tall carousel of my Haas Mini Mill 2, which I to use to machine this electrode. And then for my predefined strategies, I can select here the appropriate one to machine this electrode. At this stage, I could change those spark gaps that were created in my power shape. This information was extracted from the trode file. And we'll see here that when these strategies have been imported into this power mill project, the appropriate spark gaps have also been applied to the three electrodes, the rougher, the semi-finisher, and the finish electrode. Each has its own folder and each contains the imported templates. The tooling carousel has been imported. Any boundaries that are used here will also come in. We'll see in the levels and sets the clearance, the base and the burn region applied to an appropriate level. We have a set which selects the whole electrode. When naming of boundaries it's helpful to for them to be informative to the user. So here we can see insert burn and clearance region. So what we'll see when I select this option here for create, a boundary will be created down here, a burn and clearance region boundary. This will now be inserted into these burn and clearance region boundaries. That's defined in my underscore batch.mac file. While this is creating, I'm going to create my second electrode. So I'm going to extract the electrode again in exactly the same way. Create the material block. That's information extracted from the trode file. I can dynamically analyze it here so I can see I've got around 0 0.9 degrees of draft angle. I can then choose my Mazak Variaxis machine to machine this. And now just choose the appropriate strategies to be imported. Again, upon selection, the strategies will come in, the tooling will come in, but it could have changed the spark gaps if it was so required. So the folder structure is here, name of the electrode description of the electrode with the spark gaps, the tooling carousel of this Mazak Ferry axis, 
boundary information, and here we have the levels and sets. Now, for this type of electrode, I wish to create a set called top surfs, and in there I'm going to acquire just these top faces to be inserted into that set. So I'm just going to select these out just as we would normally in Power Mill. Normal selection. Select the selected surfaces. Acquire them to this set. And now when I run the underscore batch file, we'll have boundaries created around that top region. When I go back to that previous electrode, I can see now this has been fully calculated. So here is our model area clearance to rough out the electrode. We've used an automatic toolpath here to create the toolpath for the whole top region. We also have a smaller program which goes in and to machine the radius at the back. What we've also created here is our NC programs of each of these electrodes. So that's one program per electrode and each of these programs contain the three toolpaths. So now when I write these toolpath programs out I can see now when I look into the NC program directory that's contained within that electrode that when I put this into my editor we can see now the code has been created for us to run the machine tool. If I go to my other electrode, I can see that's now been completed. So I can analyze this now and see this is my area clearance toolpath. We have a file that runs the top of the rib, and a file then for the file walls. We are now going to extract from the trode file an electrode to be inspected together with the points that were created in PowerShape. When this CAD model is imported, the points will be come in. And what we'll see is the automatic generation of the probe paths for those points that we predefined. Now I'm going to move my probe away. If I do the simulation here, we can see how the probe will approach these points normal to the surface. We can now go and have a look at the inspection report of those points. The results have been loaded. The confetti is green, indicating they're acceptable. This image here also indicating that it's fine together with normal power and spec information here informing us that all is perfectly within a tolerance. I can now view these results. Deviation here is within the spark gap limit. We can see now picture representation. When I click next we can go to our final screen and finish now. We'll put all this information into the Trode file.